In 4.4.1, we discussed how we could actually enter error or warning uh, features um, to make sure that the code is being used correctly. Well, what about if we wanted to check the errors in the code itself? You know, like all programming languages, MATLAB requires quite precise coding, precise coding to make sure that things operate correctly. And even experienced programmers co commonly make errors in coding and struggle to correct or debug the uh, the code okay MATLAB has got lots of uh, different ways of debugging um, using lots of different tools okay and to help to spot errors in the code um, and the most important of those are going to be introduced here in this section in this video let's say we want to write a piece of code to compute the first six values of a sequence for a given starting value and the sequence is y n y n equals y and that's going to be n minus 1 n minus 1 to the power of 1.5 okay so that's the that's the sequence so y n the second so that we, we give a certain value at y1 y2 would be y1 to the power of 1.5 and then y3 would be y2 to the power of 1.5 and so on and so forth and we want to work out, say, the first six values of this. Okay. Unfortunately, there's a piece of code here written here that that uh, aims to do that. Okay. So we've started this function, y equals power sequence y first. Okay. It calculates the first six terms of the sequence y n equals y n minus one to the power of one point five for a given y one value. Okay. And we've got a variable dictionary here. Y one is the first value for y, and y output corresponds to the first six elements of the sequence. Okay, so we're going to set um, y. We're just going to initialize it from zeros from one to six. Okay, y one is the first value, so that's the that's the input argument that's coming in. Okay, y two, well that's going to be y one to the power of one point five. Y three is going to be y two to the power of one point five, and so on and so forth. But you might notice just by looking at it, there's a deliberate mistake that I've inputted just here. Okay. That's clearly there's a, a mistake there, okay? But let's say that we didn't notice what that mistake was, okay? And how would we avoid an error in this process? And given this error occurred, how could we detect it? Well, firstly in MATLAB, you know, the, the first thing to do in terms of mistakes is, is to write the code and test it in stages, okay? In this example, you might want to write the first um, Write the code that only computes the first two values of the sequence, these two bit here, and then test it to make sure that that was working. And once you're happy that that's working, you can then test the next next few lines of code. And you can use the semicolon or not um, to display things to make sure that things are working as you as you write them. And it's quite a good idea to test code as you continually write it to make sure it's uh, it's running uh, okay at every step of the way. Because obviously, well, the worst thing would be to write a big, uh, secret, you know, sophisticated piece of code, and then run it at the end, and you end up with a lot of uh, different types of errors and values that are wrong, and you, you're not quite sure where you made the mistake. And once you've uh, written your code, or part of the code, um, test it with a, a wide range of sort of known parameters. Okay. For example, if you've written a code to compute the roots of a quadratic um, equation, you should test your program works with different um, quadratic coefficients covering cases where one, two, or no real roots are present, and verify the results using a calculator. And the other, obviously, other piece of code to make make debugging right is to is to um, indent the code as appropriately, um, and, and you can makes it easier to read. Now there are three sort of types of mistakes, or three class of three um, classes of mistakes um, that, that that come about when you're programming. One is known as a syntactic error, one is known as a runtime error, and one is known as a semantic error. Okay, a syntactic error is when uh, meaningless syntax is used, and MATLAB doesn't understand what you're trying to say. Okay, for example, in MATLAB. Of a, a syntactic error has no sort of defined meaning. So if we said a equals two, 
uh, closed brackets, open brackets, uh, three, so you know, closed uh, curly braces, we press return. MATLAB doesn't really understand what's going on here. It says when calling a functional indexing variable, use parentheses, otherwise check for mismatch delimiters. And that's an easy type, easy type of error to deal with because MATLAB will identify the line on which there's a problem, okay, um, and it and it will terminate the program when you reach when it reaches that line of code. It's usually just simply a case of e of editing the code to correct the error. A runtime error, which is the second type, contains code that makes sense to MATLAB, but the culprit line causes an error for some reason. For example, if we had a variable uh, count one to six, say, equals one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we want to say, well, the sixth value um, equals um, count one to six, six. Okay, we press return, we get an error because obviously the uh, issue here is that the MATLAB understands both of those commands. It, creates a variable called count 1 to 6, uh, that's got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in it, and it's saying, and my next line is saying the 6th value, okay, well that's going to be the 6th element of that vector. But clearly, what we're asking for is something that's beyond the dimensions of that vector. So both of the lines are syntactically correct, but the second line generates an error as it's trying to access the 6th element of a 5 dimension, uh, dimensional vector. Now, what's important to note here is that um, often the error will lie, lie in a line above um, where the error is identified with MATLAB, because although it's saying the error index, the, the, error, the command that created the error is the, is the thing saying count 1 to 6, um, 6, um, obviously the issue is the fact that our vector only has five, uh, five elements in it, so we need to move up and see where the, what, you know, what it's trying to refer to. Now, semantic error is the last time, or logic error, is where MATLAB is able to run all the, all the code without generating an error message, but does not produce the required result. For example, if you calculated it, if you had a function that you designed that was to calculate the velocity based upon a distance and time, and you, and you uh, miswrote the line that actually calculates the velocity and said it's distance times time, when in fact it should be distance divided by time, MATLAB has no way of understanding that you made a mistake there um, and will run, return the code and return a value but that value will be wrong. Um, now semantic errors are, are, are the potentially the most problematic since the programmer does not always notice um, that you, the mistake has been made. Um, now the way to solve this is, is uh, to use something called breakpoints. So the error in this power sequence function, this one here, okay, um, is of is is of this semantic type, this last type. that's difficult to difficult to um, discover. And suppose we wrote the code, check the outputs with some manually calculated values, and realised the semantic error was present. At this stage, we would examine the code to try and find the error. But in this case, you probably you can probably identify the error quite clearly by simple visual inspection. You can see quite clearly that we've got uh, y two is y one. To the power of 1.5, y3 is y2 to the power of 1.5, and you can see that y4 is y should be y3 to the power of 1.5, when in fact it's it's y2 in the, in the code. Okay, but obviously, um, but sometimes you can imagine with complicated functions it might be quite difficult to find a mistake, and so this is where breakpoints can be used. Um, so we've got we've got this piece of code, okay. And um, if we typed power sequence 2 or power sec, sec 2 into the code, okay, that's, it's, so that's going to take the um, first value is going to be 2 and it's going to calculate the series of values, okay. Now, you'll see, because of the deliberate error on this line, 14, okay, the third and fourth values are identical and that shouldn't be the case, okay. Um, and what we're going to do is to, to investigate the error in more detail, we're going to place a breakpoint on the line that starts y3 equals y, y2 to the power of 1.4. Okay. To do this, position the cursor on the line or press F12 or click the um or quit 
you see we've got here, so click this line here, you see this uh, thing here, we can click that, and that creates a, um, that creates a breakpoint, you can see that that turns into a red disc. Okay, you can also press F12 on your keyboard if you've got F12, there we go, um, and that will, that will do the same thing, and that creates a breakpoint, so that's like a stop. So now if we write Power Secret 2, okay, you should see what happens is the program will run, okay, and it will only run the function up to that breakpoint and then it will pause, retaining the, the variables um, that the function is currently using in the workspace. And now a green arrow appears next to the breakpoint indicating that the execution of the code is paused at the start of that line and that, um, and that the usual um, symbol down here, we've got a K in front of it indicating that we're running a piece of code uh, but we've uh, here's a breakpoint. Now at this point you can do some different things to investigate the code. First you can have a look at the variables in the workspace to see that they have the correct um, uh, number of values at this point. Okay, so there's our Y at the moment. Okay, and you can see that we've got zero for the for the rest of the values. Okay, um, and you can also type commands in the command window. Simple computations to help verify. Um, what the variable should be, or even modify the values. And you can then also press the step foot button under the editor tab near the top of the screen to move to the next line and continue investigation. And you can see up here we've got the step button up here. And the alternative would be to press the continue button, which will let MATLAB finish running the code, okay, or move to the next breakpoint if you added more than one. And fifthly, you can quit the debugging altogether by clicking the stop button over here. So if we click the continue button, it will continue running the code um, as it was doing so before, and yeah, evidently show you this re this uh, result.